For some time now I've been interested in sustainable textiles and traditional methods of textile production. Along the way I became intrigued by nettles. Nettles grow everywhere, usually around the edges of human activities. There's so much more to them than their sting. They're a wonderfully nutritious source of food. And as I've been discovering, their fibres can be turned into usable fabrics. Over the last three years I've experimented with various techniques for extracting usable fibres from nettle plants. As you walk through woods you'll find patches of nettles like this. And you'll just see some of them are standing head and shoulders above the rest and those are probably the ones you want to go for. You just need a knife or secateurs or something like that. So if you, if you cut just above, so you're leaving the roots intact, you're not pulling any of that out and you just take that out, that will not disturb the root structure and more nettles will grow out of that. And then for stripping them, I just uh, use a little square of leather, just wrap it around the stem and just pull it through and go back and forwards a couple of times and that the, the sting off the nettles is just loads of these little hairs, they're like little um, hypoderm hypodermic needle type things and if you just rub your hand or a bit of leather up them it flattens the hairs out and then they don't sting anymore. We're in the sort of getting towards the end of June and I think they're just starting to get of a size worth, worth bothering about. And it's worth just having a look at the fibre that you get when it's fresh. And if you just get your fingernails into one of those, it should just peel apart. And then you can just chase, chase the split up the stem. And then as soon as you've got that, you can just start separating the fibre from, from the core of it. And you just break it and it literally just peels apart and when it's wet that's when it peels apart easiest the downside to its wet state is that all the fibers are bound together by this sort of wax waxy gluey pectiny I don't know actually what it is but that that's what you want to get rid of uh, through the processes that we're going to take the nettle through The next step in the process is retting, which basically means rotting. And what you're trying to achieve when you're retting is break down the glues, the pectins and the gums that bind the fibres to each other. So you bring your bundle back home and you just sort of spread them out so they're touching the grass. And then every day you just come out and just turn them over and keep doing that. If it's 
rainy and wet, the process is going to happen faster. You're looking probably at about three plus weeks and you've really just got to keep testing. Let's just pull out a stem and just see how, what, the, um, what the fibres are like. As they dry out, they get harder and stiffer and more brittle and it can be quite a struggle to, um, to actually pull them apart. But basically you just want to run a slit up the length of the stem. Nettle plants have these nodes running up the stem. And when you're stripping off the fibre, um, it's at those points that the fibre is likely to break because although you do have long uh, single fibres that run the length, they often sort of diverge at these points. So the way I strip um, the fibre off most effectively is to sort of crack it above and below a node and then approach the node. So if I crack it above it and then you just pull the, the pithy core away from the fibre and then I stop just above a node and then I'll come in from the other direction and then just sort of grab both sides and just gently rock it off the node, off that bit of pithy core and that keeps the fibre um, intact. Now you can see that one of the, th this, this is quite close to being ready but if you see these little bits, you're always going to get a bit of this but this is a sign of it uh, not being fully retted is that when you're peeling it off if it brings the bits of this core, the pithy core gets stuck to the fibre and you, you can get that off but if you're stripping them off and you're getting lots of that core sticking to the fibres that's an indicator that it's not retted enough and you can give it a few more days. So that's how long our fibres are and as we go through the process that length is going to get shorter and shorter unfortunately. So you keep checking and you'll get a feel for it. Like these ones here you can see that's that's perhaps that's been in a, on the grass more than the others and it's definitely got this more blackened you can see the sort of fungal action at work. Now that one, you can see bits of baldness starting to come in there. So that one's probably retted enough. You just need to get a little slip so you can get your fingers in there. And then I sometimes find turning it away from yourself and just prising it apart. Okay, so same thing, they're, they're the nodes, so we've got below the node there, we're just going to go above it and just peel this pith back, peel it back from that side and just ease it over the node. Here we've got three different bundles of nettles. These ones were stripped off a nettle that we picked earlier in the woods today. And you can see those, as well as being a lot greener, have this slightly, if I squeeze them, you're going to get moisture out of there. They're very wet and they also have um, this sort of waxy feel and all the fibres are quite stuck together in there, all those bundles of fibres. And it's just got this rubbery feel. These ones were uh, off nettles I picked probably um, 10 days, two weeks ago, and those have been retting through a very, very dry period. So the fibres have dried out, but they probably haven't, haven't retted fully. Um, it's getting close, but I can, you can see the greenness and they just still have this slight waxy texture, wa waxy feel to them. Whereas these nettles, which have had the full ret and they've been fully dried out, um, those ones are much thinner. They've much, got much paper-like paper feel. 
and the fibers are already starting to just naturally come apart from each other and that's what we're after that's the that's the goal at the end of the journey so that's a bundle of strip nettle fibers and the next part of the process is to soften them up you can see they're quite stiff and wiry and I often do it when I'm out walking with the dog I just take a bundle with me and then as you as you're walking you just hand roll them and then you just keep doing that for as long as you can bear and in the process you can see you're getting these little clusters of very fine silk-like fibers starting to come out I just use this little uh, kitchen table knife and it's quite blunt it's got an edge but it's not sharp and what you have to do is then just start scraping the fibers and as you do this you're going to get lots of short bits waste bits that come off now this is the toe and this is all going to, you're going to use all this but so you just collect it as it comes out and you just keep scraping starting at the ends and working up And then as you scrape away that, scrape away the fibres, it's getting rid of the, the bark and it's getting rid of the short tangled bits. So just with a little bit of scraping, you're already starting to see the fibres start separating out. This is a bundle of fibres that I've scraped on previous sessions and you can get an idea of how fine they they get once you once you spend a bit of time you, you're getting these very very soft very very fine fibers they've all separated it out from each other and so that means when it comes to spinning it's actually going to behave itself and you're going to be able to get a decent thread so what I'm doing is I'm just gathering that up and saving it until I've uh, got enough of it to actually make something substantial. However, the good news is that all the stuff that you're scraping off is still really good to use. But we have to do one extra step and that's when I use wool carders. But it doesn't take much for suddenly you're getting these really lovely fibers and bits that maybe don't go you can discard and then you just roll them up into what's called a row lag i mean i would definitely brush this more than i've than i've done here but just for demonstration purposes you roll that into a row lag and here's some uh, here's some row lags of stuff that i've actually gone through much more carefully and there are little bits of stuff in there that you may not want but you can get rid of that in the spinning process and when it's in this form a row lag it's just perfect for starting to spin with and, and really all you're doing now is just adding twist into this bundle of tangled fibers and you're drafting it out to the thickness that you want and then you just simply add twist and by adding twist it just locks the fibers down add some twist and that's it you've now got it into a a form which you can start working with these are fibers that I've spun and then dyed but you can see that the the nettles because it's got it's quite fluffy soaks in color really well and so these are just all dyed using natural dyes this is dyed with woad I think that's onion skins that's probably turmeric I think when that's woven up into something and then put through a few wash cycles and being beaten and stuff I think that would that would continue to soften up this is all this is as far as I've got of actually just doing some test samples so that was when it was 
spun quite coarse and that feels really really strong but rough you certainly wouldn't want that against your skin but in terms of a tough bag belt tough over jacket that could work um, and that's just that's a little bit finer and that's starting to starting to get more like a fabric that you'd wear humans have been making clothing from nettles for millennia and still do in places like Nepal but the methods we'd have used in northern Europe seem to have been largely lost or forgotten. They're the fibre of the landless, with the potential to produce fabric for free. I hope this short film will encourage you to give it a go.